when it comes to cancer treatment now how does it differ how does the cancer treatment in our uh, subcontinent in india differ from the rest of the world a lot of patients might just you know kind of go into the search engines and google out their symptoms and look at what the western world is doing but there is something very interesting to understand that in our part of the world in our country there are a lot of differences than uh, w- w- what is happening in the west now to begin with the uh, our country is uh, full of diversity we have people from different ethnic origins so our molecular biology is different the molecular biology of the cancer is also different in all this population so there is a lot of heterogeneity then the second thing that is very important to understand is that we don't have standardization of the treatments all across the country because of the limited resources because people sometimes cannot afford to go out of their own places also so there is heterogeneity of the treating expertise also now the other thing that is very important is that we don't have uh, the government paying for the treatment of every patient out there so we don't have something which is called uh, the national security system social security system as is prevalent in a lot of countries in the west so there the treating specialist doesn't have to ever think whether the patient would be able to afford this treatment or not whether i should write this or not whether i should consider this therapy or modality or not because here there the focus is only treatment the rest of the onus is on the government now here that's not the only thing here majority of the people would be spending from their own pocket even if they are insured for example through their companies or have taken up the insurances and all but then they are paying the premiums and all so at the end of the day the burden is on them the onus is on them so they'll be having their own restrictions their own limitations their own financial issues then the second thing that surfaces is, is the social issue the taboo that is linked to the cancer there are specific diseases in our community where you see or in our society in our country that have got a very peculiar taboo attached to them one is tuberculosis people do not open up very commonly saying that they have tuberculosis or if they have epilepsy and the third is cancers which is very unfortunate people come up with the questions like is it contagious if my husband has it would i get it if my wife has it would i get it if my mother or father has it would we get if they cook for us would we get it if we touch these kind of concerns because it is ignorance people don't know then there are the social restraints for example you'll be having a patient coming to you saying that they don't want chemotherapy because one of their kids is getting married uh, say in near future in a month time or two months time and they don't want to lose hair you'll be having patients coming to you and saying that they don't want to start the cancer therapy or specifically for example chemotherapy because then if they lose hair the people around are going to know that they are having cancer and their kids might not just get a spouse or get a match these kind of the concerns that we deal with then uh, there would be patients who don't want a specific kind of treatment which is the perfect for them uh, just because they think that if they have for example the permanent uh, sphincters are removed and we give a permanent stoma on the uh, abdomen if they are having the cancers in their rectal passages or uh, for example then they might be passing the stools throughout the day so they they feel very uncomfortable going to the religious places or offering their prayers and all and they don't want to get that treatment because of that there are a lot of financial issues emotional issues social issues that we keep on dealing with in addition to the rest of the taboos and all and the ignorance so treatment in our part of the country is not as simple as having your nccm guidelines uicc guidelines uh, or agcc guidelines or esmo guidelines and just going through them looking at the age looking at the stage and giving the treatment we as specialists are always at a con- constant strain it's a lot of emotional turbulence for us as well it's not just the patient who is going through that uh, uh, turbulence or emotional stress for us they we have to respect their choices also choices of not having the treatment for certain time or not having it at all and then we have to weigh the risks and benefits and on the other hand we cannot put their life at risk so it's a it's it's a interplay of a lot of emotional and mental uh, stuff going on around the treatments are not going to be that easy and uh, the patients here should actually they should realize that uh, the most important thing that we uh, have to learn in our journey of this experience and uh, uh, treating these patients is learning to be compassionate yet emotionally detached now what does that mean that means that we are empathetic 
we feel that pain we understand and realize what our patients go through but if we become a lot uh, involved into it we might not do justice to the treatment for example if amputation is required in certain cancers and we start crying with the patient and we become so emotional and we don't amputate we might just put the life at risk so uh, it, it's very important for the public to understand that when they're going through that cancer treatment, they're not going through that journey alone. The specialists, they may or may not show it because we are trained in that whole phase of uh, training period that we go through to not surface our emotions. But that doesn't mean that we don't feel that pain or we're not a part of that journey with you. We are very much a part of that journey with you and we take each and every decision taking into consideration all the problems that you are having, whether it is personal, social, financial, emotional, or any other. Trust your treating doctor.